if Ted Turner had seen the distribution ch ch channels, then no matter how bad the creative was at WCW, they would still be alive. Hey, man, you've had your highs and lows of WWE. Knock down drag outs. And I'm surprised it's still with the company. And you're cutting badass promos every single week. I didn't envision you, uh, you know, being a part of the company because it seems like, man, when y'all had a fallen out, it was a big ass fallen out for whatever reason it was. And so now you're happy as a clam. How, how is the, the current regime here and current day WWE? I think I have a much better relationship with them now because they don't get to see me that often. Um, I'm not on the writing team. I'm not involved in creative. Did you miss that? No. Why? Uh, because I had a time of my life doing it, but that, that's over. And, and it's, it's. But do you still have that part of your brain where it's like, God, she would like to chip in on some of this stuff? Or are you doing it within uh, your and Brock's storylines? I chip in on the things that I'm directly involved in. And if I have something to say about something that I see, I will speak to the person directly. So if they want to pitch it, they're welcome to. And if they don't, then they don't have to. I don't get emotionally involved in the other segments of the show anymore. Right. I've learned to just say, okay, that's what they want to do. Good for them. Now, if a talent comes up to me and say, hey, did you watch my segment? Yeah. They may get a very intense, uh, passionate answer, right? but I'm not willing to fight to the death over two words that are in a promo anymore. Now, coming from your background, I mean, I've put you over in, in, in a million interviews because it's all true. You helped me so much when I went down to ECW with the superstar Steve Austin, the phone call. You were the first guy to call me. Steve, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. I got a busted arm. I want you to come work for me. Can't work. Got a busted arm. Anyway. You, you help me, you know, harness and focus my energy and develop a good promo. So, so that being said, with all the success of you, that you had at ECW with helping all these different personas, characters, people uh, define themselves and turn out great gimmicks and promos, how much of the current roster is coming up to you on a daily basis saying, Paulie, check this out, or ask, like, like we just talked about, your opinion of something and ask for your advice as, as a teacher, a mentor. Uh, a lot, you know, and it's funny because I used to be the kid in the locker room that had all these ideas that could revolutionize the business. And now I'm the old guy in the locker room yeah. with these ideas that I hope can still revolutionize the business. I just don't give them to the promoters or try to feed them to the other writers or producers slash agents anymore. Now, when a talent comes up to me, if a Bray Wyatt will come up to me or a Roman Reigns or a Seth Rollins or a Dean Ambrose, or any of these, or, or and even from, you know, from the girl's side, an AJ Lee, a, a, a Natty Neidhart will come up to me and they'll ask me something. I'll give them an, you know, an, an answer from my perspective. And I, that's the avenue for my passion in terms of helping somebody out or, or sharing a vision with somebody. What's, what's your uh, current schedule on the road? You're living in New York, right? Yes. So how often are you on the road? I've, rare now. Uh, now I'm pretty much on Brock's schedule, plus I make the TVs that he doesn't make. So I, I leave home on Sundays. I, I make TVs on Mondays. If they need me on SmackDown, I'll go to SmackDown on Tuesdays. And I go home the first fight in the morning the next day. Now, before this, when CM Punk and I were, were, were opposing each other, uh, it, it got so hot that I started making all the house shows again. And I did that for a couple of months and burned myself out and desperately needed a few weeks off to recharge the batteries until Brock came back. My, my schedule is a blessing right now. I really work very, very little. You brought up CM Punk. Uh, I don't know when this podcast is going to come out. It will be after WrestleMania. I predicted uh, a couple weeks ago that CM Punk will return at WrestleMania 30. Uh, here we are talking. Is he going to come back? We are 48 hours away from WrestleMania, and unless a really wild move is pulled before then, or and or at least a first conversation between Vince and Punk happens, he will not be at Wrestle. When's the last time you talked to Sam Punk? Oh, I talk to him all the time. I don't really talk about the industry that much because it's obviously a sore spot with him. But when, when, when you left the company, I'm sure you had very select friends that you could talk with and who could talk with you. And it doesn't have to be hey, what was said about me in the locker room or, or hey, uh, did you hear anything? Or they say to you, hey, you're coming back. I'm sure it could be, hey, how are your kids? Hey, how are you feeling today? Hey, uh, you're okay? Everything cool or everything not okay? You want to talk about anything? When I left the company, I stayed very good friends with people who were still in the company. It, it, it doesn't mean just because Punk has left the company 